Barshins is brought to you by our awesome patrons. Thanks for supporting the channel. Barshins! Hello everybody, welcome to Barshins. Hi Stuart. Hello Barry, how are you doing? I'm beautiful today. How are you? All right. Well, I'm not. I'm not. There's a, there's a guest we here, Barry. We have a guest here. Uh, it's bloody Steve, Steve McNeil, isn't it? Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you? I am well, thank you. You went with beautiful. Oh, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not disputing it. I was no, just yeah, strong. I, 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 yeah. I just, you, you should get offered beautiful if you get than too strong, it to yeah, There's like a silent alarm you can trigger under the table. All right. Yeah, just okay. try and, it's like a carousel of words. I just pick... Yeah, beautiful was... You look yeah. be I'm not saying thank, you're beautiful. Thank you, you too. I see, I've okay. only just met you. <laughs> two out of three, how are you? Yeah. Yeah. Are you beautiful? Uh, not at the moment, but you are, and that's what's important. Oh, that's very, very sweet. Yeah. Yeah. And you're beautiful to someone. Who? With someone. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. If, you, if you stand behind them, you're beautiful. It's like waiting. It just sort of brings yeah. your average up. Yeah. That's, that is no doubt true, but but rude. Yeah. Oh, dear. Thanks, Barry. No, no problem. Hello, I'm Steve. Thank you for having me. Yes. Yeah. This is Steve, the new presenter. Of <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. Steve Shins. Could you give us a summary of uh, like a little biography of yourself? I can have a go. That, yeah. Uh, I enjoy, I'll, I'll tell you. Hello. Hello, camera people. <laughs> uh, I am Steve McNeil. I, for the last five years, have been a comedian that plays video games in things. Do you want more? Yeah. I oh, went to the Radcliffe School when I had her from 12 to 16 in Milton Keynes. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I was a comedian for about 10 years. Started off as an actor, that didn't work. Started off, then I was a comedian, that didn't work. So then I started playing video games and that sort of worked. And now I do that. Do it on Twitch, do it on YouTube, do it on telly, do it on wherever they'll pay me. Right. Not today, but generally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Generally this would be paid. Definitely not yeah, today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. is a no-fee show because... Well, you don't sure. get paid. Look at it. Uh, <laughs> We're literally hiding nice. out in a free this room. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. If only we owned it. it is, yeah, it's yeah, Or cool. any of the camera. Well, actually, that camera is mine. The little yeah. cheap <laughs> one at the back. That one's as well. Yes. Is that deliberate? Yeah. Is that? Yeah. It's because it probably doesn't strain itself correctly. Okay. <laughs> That was one of them like uh, leveling things on a building site. I like yeah. it. It yeah. does it's have like a weird internal leveling thing. It drives me mad. When oh, is it? Using it on the sofa. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all right. That's a cool story. Wasn't it? Yeah. Should we uh, yes. start with the article? Certainly. <laughs> all right. I've heard of these. <laughs> From Fox Nine. Fox Nine. Wasn't that the That's name that... of the like? Murder team from Kill Bill, weren't they? Fox Nine, Fox Force Nine, or something. Fox, I think you're right. Yeah, I'm just getting a vision of like Fox Racing, and it is Fox Number Nine in, in, the, in the channel. Fox and Racing. Be six on a dog track, so they'd have to be doing oh, that. Yeah, often. I've yeah. never been dog racing. Have you been? My dad used to drive the hair. What? Uh, which, really? is, which is what you call that. So yeah. the, uh, well, they actually drive. It's like a oh hello bonk. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, it's, it's like a wheel, and the, uh, you have to sort of steer it fast enough that uh, the dogs can't catch up with it, but not so fast that they lose interest or lose something. Ah. So it's quite, oh. it's quite, a, quite a science. Is it, it scented? That I don't know. I don't I know if they scented like the hair. Dunk it in some bisto or something. I mean, it must smell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah, I, I imagine it smells bisto. disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, It's an old it's cuddly toy stuck to a stuck to a yeah. wire in a dog track. So yeah, it smells mm. of fags probably. Yeah. 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 yeah, and loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tears of like broken up. Tickets, I've been just... to the Great Yarmouth Greyhound Racing Track a couple of times, and we went there once at work, and they'd sponsored a race in my honour for my birthday, and it was called <laughs> the Stuart Ashen Birthday Trophy, and I had to present the trophy to the winning person. There's this really ah. awkward photo of me going like that, and, <laughs> and the guy looks so pleased who owned the Greyhound. He's like, <laughs> it's massive cheesy, and that was useful what, for people in the audio. What was the figurine? Was uh, the it was it? just like a really generic plasticky sort of. Um, trophy, like like a bowling trophy, but with a dog on it, basically. <laughs> you oh, bowling right. a dog. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, so basically nothing like a bowling trophy. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was like... <laughs> Oh, those were the days. <laughs> I've already interrupted. I'll shut up. Yeah. Fox. That Fox. is absolutely fine. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, a bowling trophy for a dog. Hmm. There might be like a dog. There might be like a bowling alley that's not named. It's got a dog sort of words in it. I'm now trying yeah, to think of one. Yeah, but yeah, that's uh, the the Shih Tzu oh, be bowling a... alley. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that'll work. It's massive dog food. It could be it's be like the size of a bowling ball. It could just be like imitating a feeding. And there's it. just a dog at the end with a huge wide mouth. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was it. Yeah. 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 How did you it. score points though? It's difficult. I don't. I've never been really. I've, I've been a horse racing once, but yeah, that was. Where'd you go horse racing? At Chester. Oh, right. Yeah, it's a bit. Uh, Bit alcoholic infused, so I don't remember much else. Okay. But uh, didn't didn't really gamble. I just went for the for straight to the pimp's tent. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, <laughs> but it was uh, yeah, it was all right. But I don't know. I've never really been into it, that sort of stuff. Oh, 
Sorry to hear that. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, well. Something really interesting. I did a bloody shark call in that yeah. case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Fox 9 says, Police called to check on cardboard cutout of my pillow CEO. My pillow CEO. Yeah. So, so that- my pillow must be a website? Like Presumably, yeah. It'll be a business. Yeah, yeah. 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 Or it's just be... his pillow. I like yeah, the idea yeah. that it's a social network entirely for pillows, though. That would be great. My pillow. Yeah. Oh, oh my pillow's not very good. Pillow talk. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. That was good. Yeah, thanks, thanks. There won't be any more of that. That's so, good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, in Jordan, Minnesota. What? Why is this a sentence fragment? Ah, here we are. Police officers in Jordan, Minnesota, were called to check on the welfare of a man standing motionless outside in the cold, wearing no coat and hugging a pillow. When officers arrived, they found the man was actually a cardboard cutout of my pillow CEO, Mike Lindell. So it was just a cardboard cutout. Yes, literally just 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 like an advertising thing of him with a pillow saying, buy my pillows. It was a cardboard cutout of the my pillow CEO. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's literally true on every level. And that's the shot I've done. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Those cardboard cutouts sure can look real from a distance. Sorry, this guy's turning to Foghorn Lakehorn after that. (laughs) And the caller certainly was not wanting to get too close, thinking, who is this deranged person standing outside in the cold hugging a pillow? It's a fucking cutout. See, the thing about living creatures is they move. They seem yeah, to miss that. that, is that, that, that. If you don't want to get too close, if you did a lap of a cardboard cutout by about ninety degrees, you've already worked out. Yeah, yeah right. absolutely. You don't yeah. have to get any nearer. I to mean, solve yeah. it. if you're anything beyond eighty degrees, you haven't realised, and you've got eye problems. Basically, like this man's really thin. Oh, oh, that could have been yeah. multiple sides. I guess I don't know. I don't know how good the cardboard cutout was. Does it say? It, it's. It does look very two D. Have you considered turning off your screen lock when you're doing this? It goes. It goes black after about ten. <laughs> uh, yes. No, I haven't because I've okay. never worked at home. All right. And yeah. do you know what? I've been doing that all day, and my battery's nearly dead. Yes. Come on. Yeah. Oh, wait for it. But this cardboard CEO isn't the only inanimate object getting cold weather welfare checks during this Minnesota winter. Can you give us that again? During? They've really lent into the letters C and W in that. They, they absolutely again? have. <laughs> They've also replaced the word during with dewing, which isn't even a word. Anyway, this cardboard CEO isn't the only inanimate object getting cold weather welfare checks okay. d- during this Minnesota winter. Beautiful. Bloody hell. In front of the Basilica of St. Mary in Minneapolis lies a sculpture of a homeless Jew. Jesus. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Visible right along Hennepin Avenue, the statue looks so real that people are calling 911 concerned for someone overexposed to this brutal cold. And people have witnessed ambulances pulling up to it. Is that a photo of it there? Well, obviously, um, yeah, there's no photo of the that's Jesus. That's my pillow CEO. Oh, okay. do have well, that's not Jesus. Okay. It's, not, no. it's not a cardboard cutter of a homeless Jesus, though, is it? No. Yeah. That Jesus wasn't famously homeless. That wasn't one of his things. That See, is a cardboard cutter of not Jesus. USP, they thought like, was a homeless person. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's bad journalism. Just that bit. That bit. Yeah. 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 The rest, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, <laughs> pull it to level, at least. Yeah. He's really hugging that pillow as well. Oh, it's wait, like, here's like the lover. real news when we get to the end, though. Hello. February 2019 was the fourth snowiest month on record in Minnesota. The month was also marked by extreme cold that forced many school districts to close or delay start times. I was expecting something a little bit more dramatic at the end of that. I don't know, as opposed to it was yeah. so cold somebody put a jacket on. I use cardboard cutouts in my videos for help me focus the camera. They're really good. Yeah, the really? the hell out of my kids the other morning. She came in the shower, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I, just, I didn't put it down because I was doing a two-day. It was overnight, and I thought, oh, I'll just put it outside. So she went in the bathroom, and it was facing the way as she came in the morning. She comes out the shower, and there's Mr. Bean there with a Mexican moustache going like that. It freaked the hell out of her. How so, old's your kid? Uh, she's 10. Oh, yeah, yeah, she, oh, she was, was like... <laughs> <laughs> she yeah, yeah, didn't make it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. So it was, yeah, Homer Simpson, uh, The Queen, Mr Bean, all different ones like that. But I just literally, because I'm self What are you making? I don't know, just to help me um, focus the camera. <laughs> oh, right, oh, so if I put okay, the okay. tripod where I'm going to stand, I'll focus it and I'll move out of the way right, and then right, half right. the time it doesn't work. So, yeah, yeah. But yeah, they become characters and it's just like, yeah, it's scary. Like Home Alone, isn't it? I'll use them to make them look like characters and things like that. You stick them on a record player, yeah. Yeah, the strange. new version of CCTV, yeah. you don't need that. You just have a train set with a cardboard cutout on it going around. That was but w- is there a particularly effective cardboard cutout for that? I mean, you want somebody intimidating as opposed to... Well, I, I did know. have Michael Jackson. Well, yeah. now that'd be better for the job. Yeah, well, possibly, yeah. Keep everyone away, wouldn't absolutely. it? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's the answer, isn't it? Yeah. Just a room full of Michael Jacksons going around on a train. I mean, Nobody would go in there. 
No, yeah, I'm scared now. <laughs> Did you see <laughs> that? You should doc? Be. Like, no, I've no. not. I've, I've heard it's quite. We don't harrowing. have to talk about that. No, no, no we don't. No, please let's a, not. No, no. Let's okay. go back to cardboard. I actually went in my office the other week, and the guys from Did You Know Gaming had got hold of a Dwayne the Rock Johnson cutout from a recent film and just stuck it in my office and I opened the door and gave me a fucking. Uh, but heart yeah, attack. they are. So yeah, like, if you look at it straight away, you do think yeah. we had one behind the fridge as well the other day. You shut the door for it. Does, every, does everybody spend lots of time with cardboard cutters? Because <laughs> yeah, I've yeah. never been near one really, really other than that a cinema. Really? You guys have got well, them in your house. Yeah. Unfortunately, now you've been here, you will be infected by yeah. the cardboard cutters. In the next cutting. two weeks, I'm going to see hundreds of okay. Yes. In oh, fact, yeah. no one leaves Barshans every yeah. 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 Like a rubbish version of The Ring, now you've told me that. Yeah, right. <laughs> you just see a cardboard cutout. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, seven days. Yeah. Oh, that was... That was oh, fair enough. Yeah. Oh, dear. So that, they didn't find out who planted it there? No. It's just... just I don't know. You... What, they didn't even seem to care. What, what sort of police force is that? There's no resolution to that, is there? No, there really isn't. It is a peak shartical. Okay. So, Steve, you're a streamer now for the... <laughs> <laughs> it's all not right now, Speaking but... of... <laughs> yeah, yeah, speaking of <laughs> couple cuts. Yeah, yeah. You. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, yes, I, yeah, I am. I, I, yeah, I stream on Twitch a few times a week. I'm not full time because I'm doing other stuff, but I've been lucky. I've managed to fit it around other stuff. So I do it a couple of times at like lunchtime and then yeah. in the evenings. But uh, we're in the same Twitch clan. We're a little Twitch club? gang, aren't we? It's not really Twitch taken men? off. I, I couldn't be bothered to do anything with it other than create it. So it's not really become a thing. <laughs> How does that mean then, a Twitch clan? It doesn't. What? I mean, it's literally a list. And oh, really? Yeah. It, yeah. I, I think if, like, if I'm not streaming and people go to my channel, it shows one of the yeah, other guys. Yeah, we sort of also host each other and they can see yeah, yeah, a couple of people. So, yeah. Oh, right. Is that what you do with Mensky as well sometimes? So like, well, I think I was at yours and he's like, oh, he can take over my channel now or something like that. Yes. Ah, oh, that's quite he clever. He really does. So you can sort of share audiences and stuff like that. Yeah, so if they pop in on we're not on, then they see each other. Yeah. So how do you, so you've transitioned to streaming from doing just gaming before? I I did, um, yeah, so I I did go 8-bit to the the TV show and it was after series one and I'd I'd got a bit of time before we were going to start doing the next series and I was just kicking around the house and so I thought, I should probably give that a go. So I just sort of got, got the setup and, and got into it. But I, I genuinely just did it because I thought I thought I might make a bit of money off it, off right. back, which is naive. Going, you know, <laughs> I went into online for the money, which is as you guys ah, both. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if you get really there, but, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I haven't. But uh, but what's, what's been really really nice about it generally is um, the, the community side of it because uh, I I had no sense of what the people are what they are. But like people who are in friendships. There's a, there's a guy in Scotland who's in a relationship with a woman in Italy, and they're oh, all, right. yeah, they're like mm-hmm. yeah. So it's like become this whole thing, and there's there's this lovely family of people that just sort of turn up. At, and because yeah. I do live as well, so yeah. Now, now I actually sell tickets because the people that watch the things online come to live things so it's ah, you know, awesome ah. yeah. so how, how many times a week do you stream do you do it every day I do it or? when I can I do it Monday, Wednesday lunch times then I do Thursday and Sunday nights and then I've got my other thing I do uh, Wi-Fi Wars where the people watching actually play the games on their phones like beam games and stuff yeah yeah so we just started doing that again like, like a little half hour thing at lunchtime on Tuesdays I've just come from that now and then on Wednesday nights but wow yeah but just yeah, it's, it's, oh, it's nice playing games for me it's yeah. stupid isn't it yeah absolutely yeah. I mean I, I love the whole have you ever done of, it have you ever I've, I've only seen well, Stuart and I were, I was at his house in Norwich and we just he was doing a regular Twitch stream and we sort of hopped on it and it was quite fun and I, I actually right. became I, Sort of, they sort of that like half sense of people watching with that community element, but then also the video game playing as well. I can see why it's very addictive. And yeah, you know, yeah, I yeah. mean, I've, I've always liked video games just casually to play, but you know, to get paid to do it as well is, is an absolute bonus. Yeah, as well, if I, you can. But, the sort yeah. of analogy I make for people who aren't, who aren't into it is it's sort of like talk radio, but there's like video games going on in the background. Yeah, it's sort of, yeah, yeah. it's all there just typing stuff and we're having a chat. So it's very conversational. Or certainly the way I do it. I think you as well. You're sort of yeah, like keeping on the chat absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So how do you like pick the games that you do? I mean, is there sort of like a particular genre that you've always enjoyed or that you're focused on? Funny I start, when I started off, I was trying to go, okay, I'm going to do a retro thing there, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do that. And I was, I was quite regimented about it. I was going to do different sorts of things. But actually, what's become apparent the longer I've done it is if, you, if it's not a game that you're actually into and you don't want to play, yeah. if you're not into it, they sort of get, they get that very quickly. So now it's mm. whatever I'm obsessed with. So I play uh, Stardew Valley because I've just got really obsessed with it. So I'm playing, I've been playing that for about 50 weeks now. I just keep going back to it. Every wow. Right. So the farm is good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, <it's an> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Farm. Intending to it well. Right. Yeah. So, so you that, find that as well then? Like, you got a, yeah, I mean, I, very I much a... do some research my terrible old games book. So I will just sometimes play some <laughs> working to see if it's actually any good yeah Yeah, yeah. it never is um but yeah, I keep going back to Space Crusade on the Amiga. So you find one that you like, don't you? Yeah, and people want to come back with you as well, sort of. Yeah, yeah that was absolutely. the one. That was the one thing that I did once that I think I think I think put some people off. Is I started. Uh, it wasn't Stardew, it was something else. I think it might be Minecraft. But I was I started playing it, but then I was playing it off stream and adding to the world when I was off. And it, like people got annoyed because they, they sort of want to be there with you. So you sort of uh, do you want a game that you want to play, but not so much that yeah. you get annoyed you can't play it when they're not there. Yes, that's the trick. And that's Stardew so. Valley. It's perfect. So is that you know, quite I've an never played game, Stardew though. Valley? Oh, I know it's it's, it's out on Android. Is it? Yeah, you get it on your phone now. No excuses. Mm. It's it's farm related from what you said earlier. It is farm related. Mm. Uh, is it, farm. Isn't it like Farmville?
crazy bananas. Yeah, so is it like games that you know that when you live stream it, you're like, oh, there's no point me doing that because I won't get many viewers and stuff? Or... Well, I don't get many viewers, so that's not a problem. Oh, <laughs> so, right. oh I sold oh, that one. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Thank God for yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know. It's, it's not really a good idea to jump on the popular games everyone's bloody playing. Well, no, well I've, 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 I mean, I'm sure you've got the same sort of thing as well because you're no, no offence, but you're old too. Yes. Uh, and I, 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 I'm, <laughs> you're also old. Your, yeah, boy, yeah. your boy's there, you're beautiful. Oh, well, I am. You're beautiful. Ooh, beautiful yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think a lot of the guys like so. So it is a sort of. It, I, mean, I, get, I, get, I get a good number of people watching, but they're, they're sort of they're in their late thirties, early forties. They've got that sort of retro thing as well, and they they are far more affluent than fourteen year olds that watch Fortnite. So whilst it might be a more curated, select community, they are able to support me in maybe a way that if I was playing games for 12 year olds that like, it yes. wouldn't work so yeah there is that yeah. it makes sense that's right they say that with a lot, some of the, like, the toy opening channels and things like that you know, you've got that demographic where you know it's a kid so sometimes the ads on those aren't as well but they're yeah. making their money mm. because Mattel or whoever are chucking them like, you exactly. know, yeah, like, yeah. Big or they're reaching wedges. a massive audience yeah. as well some of them yeah. Yeah. absolutely so have you always been into sort of gaming then anyway? so you did comedy and you know what, what, did, you, what did you do why, at college why, why are you doing this Steve <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 Like, what, what did you do at college and things like that like, did you always did you University is one time I was away. So when I, when I was a kid, I always had games all the way through growing up. And then when I was at university, it, it was just alcohol for about five years. Right. Where did you go to uni? Uh, Bath. Bath, yeah, okay. It's very yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. What did you get at university? I went Bath Spa, but through oh, Western... Oh, it's not the real... Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, it's the point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's right. Because uh, oh, well. I live in Western Sea for Mayor. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't make sense when you see me on air, to be honest. Sure. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, cooking was what I resorted to, but... Um, right, right, right. No, because I live in Western, so yeah, yeah. quite near Bath. But, so um, by the seaside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You still live down there now? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's where I come from What's today. it like now? Because it was run down in the 90s. Oh, it still is. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Well, they've done the seafront a bit more, but now they call it Western Sea for Mud because everyone just goes out to the sea and it's not actually sea you oh, know, a lot of it? people come down and then like they're like five minutes later they're being airlifted out because they're just like, trying to find the water ending up walking halfway to Wales because they just well I can see the sea and it fall down right. I'm going to walk out to sea and it's just literally just the mud from the seven and it's all churned up so they're literally walking in chocolate ice cream and then wow. you know the hover boats come along and the helicopters lifting them out so that's quite fun as a local to see because you're sort of sat there oh, we'll two the dog, yeah, yeah. summer evening take the dogs out like, let's see how many they pick up today so sometimes that's like my version of streaming really like, <laughs> you know I'll go and watch you know, <laughs> some uh, holiday makers being pulled out of the water. So. Yeah, yeah. Or the mud. So yeah. It sounds yeah. amazing. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So what did you do at Bath Uni? Yeah, I, did, I did a management degree at Bath. Uh, okay. Which was the thing, I, at A-levels, I, I, it was scattergun. So I did theatre studies, math statistics, business studies, and general studies. General studies doesn't count. But I did right. those so it was just nothing. And management was the idea that I don't know what I want to do, but I could do it. Like, I'll need to know how to do things. Hmm. So I need a job, so businesses yeah. jobs. Yeah, so yeah. I did that. Um, I remember that. Well, they're like, oh, take business studies because it's the widest thing. Because you I don't know what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're like, uh, oh, yeah, just put them over there. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Which actually served me really well. So I, so I, so I did that. I worked for a, a few months, but then then um, I, I went and traded as an actor and then started do acting and then comedy and all the things. But the management degree has actually been the most useful, more useful than the theatre degree which is worth nothing right uh because especially doing this sort of stuff it's business it's about, it's about it's about you know it's about contacts and networking all those horrible things if you are trying to start to get a thing knowing how yeah. to do that and manage your finances and all that stuff so actually as boring as that is that's far more useful to me than learning how to um dance right which, is, right. which hasn't come up oh and you did yeah. acting as well you wanted to be an actor then did you say yeah or? i thought yeah. i thought yeah i thought i was yeah. gonna do that I, I always enjoyed comedy but i thought but i at that time, I definitely didn't have the self confidence to think i could make a thing so i had to be in other people's things so right. and i sort of walked backwards into comedy i did um 2007. Okay. I went up. I was in a musical about the uh, anti-terror legislation in the UK. A musical about anti-terror. Very anti-terror. popular. Wow. Yeah, That's very neat. Yeah. Right? Five yeah. stars in the Guardian. But it doesn't matter. Nice. But it sounds rubbish. <laughs> Uh, but it was, it was actually quite good. But while I was up there to earn a bit of money, uh, comedian Brendan Burns uh, needed, um, at the time it was it was going to be a black guy, an Asian woman, and a white guy to be in his show, sort of like a set piece thing. Um, and I just happened to be the only person that replied to the email. So I got 10 quid, <laughs> 10 quid a night to be in his show. Okay. But then that won, it, it won what was the Perrier Award. Um, wow. And nice. so I, I, I was sitting in the audience and there was like a little reveal at the end. Um, but uh, I liked watching a comedian do the thing from. I thought, oh, I'll do that. So I then um, started doing sketch comedy. That was where, because I thought I'm an actor and... I can't. I can't just write jokes. That's hard. So I'll just. I'll, I'll make up little mini plays with people. So there was fifteen of us originally, which was really, really like um. So I think so solid crew or something. Yeah, <laughs> a sketch comedy. Uh, but then yes. a, a lot of them drifted away. We ended up with six of us, and one of that. One of those was um, Sam Pamphlon, who then was on Go Eight Bit. So that okay. we became a double act and did that for a few years, and that didn't work. Right. Uh, so two thousand and thirteen. Uh, we weren't going to go. We we were going to go up to Edinburgh and do another sketch show because we got long listed for like the main award in the third year. 
which is worth nothing because they don't announce that. Uh, yeah. So we'd sort of given up, but we thought we'd go back on the fourth year, but we hadn't, all we had, we had an opening song, which was bad. And I'd got an idea for a sketch where I thought if we listed all of the shades of white paint and somehow did that, that might be funny. Okay. It wasn't, we didn't do it. Oh. Uh, but that was all we had in March when we were We said we won't go, but uh, at the time we'd said we might do this go eight bit thing, which was get comedians drunk and play video games on a Wii at midnight. And that might still be fun. And Sam to his credit said, well, let's just go up at the weekends and do that anyway. And uh, so we just sort of, we did it purely to get drunk with our comedy friends. Yeah. Yeah. And then that actually sold tickets. Oh, became, really? Yeah, so it was, oh, awesome. we'd given up. We were just like, well, we'll go anyway and just get drunk and play on Mario Kart. That'd be fine. Yeah. And, it, and then that got, you know, picked up. For and you're doing that in front of the live audience as well. And, yeah, so yeah. first year it was in like a little 50, like literally a 50-seater uh, room. I think it was in the, what's it called? If anybody, Joker, I think it was the Joker down. But yeah, literally rate 50 seats and as many people on the stage as there were in the audience. Wow. Yeah. We had a Nintendo Wii. We, got, we like ended on Rock Band. That was our the first year. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, it's like, so literally everybody on, everybody on stage was playing instruments and doing things. But uh, So we'd have about 15 comedians come on in different rounds and battle each other and we had a cast of commentators and me and Sam so it was just utter, yeah. utter chaos and it was punishments like drink vodka and dead arms and oh, like awesome. utter, like absolute late night Edinburgh Fringe just chaotic shambles yeah. but some, we've got, yeah. had a few people on that have talked about the Edinburgh Fringe and it's right, like, right, right. like the, the pinnacle right and it's it was, <laughs> in, in a way yeah if you want to, if you want to get massive debt oh really yeah, is it? yeah that's the other yeah. thing we did here is it so expensive <laughs> yeah. like well Beck I think Beck was saying that so I wasn't so, yeah, so yeah, Beck Kill yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, yeah Beck yeah. Kill was originally going to be one of the commentators on Great but she was she was busy she was not do it she was her and Nish Kumar were the two guests we had the most because they're brilliant. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Good at it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so after you, uh, sorry, I'm trying to think where we went there. <laughs> you did the, the TV show was called on Channel 5. That's cool. Uh, no, I've done one Channel 5. Well, I was in... No, uh, Dave, Go, Go Ape, it was on Dave. Go, that's the one, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, do you say it ended badly or something? Is that... <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't... I might have done when we weren't filming, but yeah. No. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. yeah. Shh, it all went uh, great. Oh, no, I must have read that on here. That's yeah, why. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It didn't yeah. end badly. It's um, but uh, what the the process for great bit was um. Originally, it was a drunken thing in, in, in a room with a bunch of comedians being silly. Yeah. And in the transition to television, what happened was... Because it was so successful, it got put on as a format for TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed. So it developed for a couple of years, and, and, and then we, so we did three series of it, and we had a spin-off thing as well. But um, in the transition from being drunk at midnight doing it and not caring to making a thing that is meant to look shiny and proper, yeah. necessarily people... lots of, I mean, there's over 100 people worked on the show, so people get brought in wow. more of it. I know, it's insane. Uh, but they were their job was to make it more telly and make it proper. Yeah. Unfortunately, during the journey of making that originally myself um, Rob Sageby who's the guy who makes all the Wi-Fi was tech that we use in the show Rohan who was the producer we were increasingly a smaller voice within that that okay. overall thing and due weight was not paid to uh, the 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 considered opinions of the people who understood what makes games an entertaining yeah. thing, and also so what made that format work originally. It gets put for that TV machine. Did you feel it was sort of losing it? I definitely did. Bit? I definitely yeah. didn't. anybody who's seen it will agree towards the end. I think that it sort of drifted away. I think, and yeah, there's a number of reasons for that. But yeah. the, fundamentally, the original pitch was comedians play video games, yeah. and mm -hmm. that works because games are fun to watch and comedians are funny. Uh, but by the end of it, it you know we'd we'd, ha we'd have maybe people who weren't that into games on as guests sometimes. Um, okay. Even silly things like. I'm a gamer and Sam wasn't, and so I'd have the non-gamer, he'd have the gamer. Yeah. So then we level out, out our teams. Yeah, by, yeah. The, by series three, most of the time, I've got the gamer. So unsurprisingly, if you put two games against two people who can't play games, yeah, it's, it's quite one sided. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So there's yeah. just little things like that which they wouldn't necessarily understood the extent to which that affects things, but mm -hmm. we weren't able to sort of push push that case yeah, as hard as we want to. But like, people still enjoy it. Like, I mean, I had a very personal journey through that and sort of seeing my thing become something else. And yeah. So how, how did that feel? Like, was, I mean, was that... Well, I had a breakdown. So, uh, oh, really? yeah, okay. no, I had a no, it's fine. Yeah. I don't mind talking about it. It, it was very, very difficult because, uh, but some of that was about sense of ownership as well. So I've got new things that are coming up now, which actually I, people trust me now. So I've got far more creative control and that's very exciting. Mm. But um, it's, it's very, I, I, I am quite, I am quite controlly around the things I do because I've got a very clear vision of what I want to do. And when it was working with Sam, who is lazy and no one else, it's very easy to get your own way all the time. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, so yeah. Television, <laughs> television is necessarily a case of compromise to, um, it, that lots of people have got to do the bit. Like if you're just doing the art design stuff, it's, you don't need me or 20 other people having an opinion. You're doing your thing and you sort of trust that everybody's pulling in their own direction. Sure. Yeah. Um, and whilst there are certain things that happen with that TV show that may be too far away, I think, because it was the first thing me and Sam had ever done, really, on that scale, I hadn't learned how to delegate or absolve myself. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. So so if you've got like, I'm um, still trying to do everything, <clears> and one <throat> person can't make a TV show that employs over 100 people because there's too many things. Yeah. That's um, what you say. I mean, it's like you're used to that close knit team, and then all of a sudden, oh, there's yeah. 100 of us, and so we need to feel valued and feel like we've got it, to do oh, no, something. Exa exactly. Like, yeah, and yeah. So, so, to a certain extent, that, that, sort of, that, that sort of personal journey through it was as much about me wrestling with. Uh, as, as many businesses do, you know, you get to a point where, you, where 
because I, I worked in fitness club franchising for eight years while I was being an actor. This oh, is a right. sideways turn. Well, so but, um, selling the actual package of it to different I was, in, I was the stuff. brand of marketing, so it was uh, so I sort of developed a new um, like proposition and then brought that to market and things. But uh, the, that company was started by one guy, a guy called Jan Spatika and, and a couple of his mates. But that company now, they've got over a fit, 100 fitness clubs and they've got lots of people working. They've got te- different territories worldwide. Wow. And uh, sort of as I was struggling with great bit, uh, Jan was also wrestling with that transition of that company because it gets to a point where if you're an entrepreneur, which I sort of am, but just in being an idiot playing games. Oh, well, uh, that's, that's our USP. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Indeed. Yeah. But, so, but so you get to a point well, where... not calling us some idiots, but... We're doing something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know you well enough. But no, definitely... no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, you get you get to a point where if you're entrepreneurial and you grow something that's successful, you do get to a point where you have to sort of learn to step back and allow other people to do it. And it becomes something that isn't your thing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, learning that is hard if you're a control freak. Yeah, it's, I think I say if you're used to it as well, it's what, like having that trust in someone, isn't it? If yeah, you yeah. Take, you know, give give someone else who's qualified. Just like, like I have an editor now, which I'm so glad I've, right, yeah, I've yeah, done yeah. that. But it's sort of like I never had a fear of doing it. It was just more of a thing of like it just clicked one day. I was like, well, why am I doing it when yeah. someone is actually pro at it? But like I say, if you, you all the other elements you can control, that's important. Yeah. I think. Well, an edit, edit is a good mm-hmm. one because you, you will sometimes like if you if you pass on the edit to somebody else, like like if you can do a good edit and you, you've got a sense of the rhythm of it and you're used to it, sometimes they'll make a different choice on which take they use, yeah. or, they'll, mm-hmm. or they'll cut out a beat later and it'll sort of change the rhythm of it and you're, you're either going to get annoyed with that and it's going to frustrate you or you're going to go no one else watching this is going to spot that minor difference yeah. it's not how I'd have done it but it's fine it, it's, it's, it's getting comfortable with what, what the hill's worth dying on because sure. a lot of the time actually it's not affecting tangibly the, the finished product but well, you imagine, feel it yeah it. there's that sort of transition of when you're doing it as a live show like in Edinburgh or something yeah. like that and then not only is it not live it's like on TV yeah. edited, polished you know mm-hmm. you've got I don't know the TV guys are wanting to get their certain key demographics in and things like that exactly and like say these non-gaming people that are coming on yeah. just because they're probably thinking it's going to hit a different genre maybe no they were and, yeah. and they weren't wrong you know that, that show did that I mean it, it was marketed less later and so, so the, sort of the numbers tailed off a little bit it still did very well but um, they were trying to make a specific thing for what they understand their demographic to be for that channel and, I, and they successfully did it because it was very successful but if I'd have been in the edit I'd have probably gone oh can you not cut away from games when things are happening? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sort of like that does baby, sound pretty right? fundamental, to be fair. But, uh, that's definitely a yeah. bad choice. Mm. But uh, yeah, but there was plenty of other things they did that aren't to my taste, but that weren't wrong for the thing that we collectively were creating. Right. Yeah. I'm very bitter. No, 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 no. It's, yeah, it's good to talk about it. Like, um, it's not like, you know, it's not counselling. I'm good, I don't want to but I'm doing fine. It's, yeah, it's, no. It's all okay. Did you have a favourite game when you were growing up? Like, it was always Dizzy the Egg. Oh, oh man, man. I okay. say that as well. Yay. Which one? Well, did he have the five packs on the Amiga? Well, I've got, yeah, I've got the box ones. Yeah, he is correct. Yeah, he is correct. The excellent yeah, well collection. Dizzy. Excellent. Well. Well. excellent. Yeah, was it a fast food Dizzy, I think I was talking well, about? It's not proper Dizzy game, is it? No, it's so, more like a pack down. Come on, yeah. oh. quick snacks or better, please. Come quick snacks was Quick snacks is better than fast food. Was that the bubble one? Oh, Bubble Dizzy. Bubble yes. Dizzy. Yeah. Good God, I forgot yeah. that existed. Yeah. Was it Fantasyland? There was another two or three. Fantasy World, Magic Land. I mean, I will yeah. know the names of all of these. Can, right. we do, can we do them in order? By which I mean, can you yep. do it while I just go, hmm. Uh, so Dizzy. Dizzy. Treasure Island, Island Dizzy. Dizzy. Fantasy World, World Dizzy. Dizzy. Magic Land Dizzy. Spellbound Dizzy. Dizzy. Crystal Kingdom Dizzy. Oh, no, I'm out now, you see. Yeah. I think, I think you're right. There's ones on the console as well, but I think that's yes, the ones on the console. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. They were great games. So were you like, on the Amiga playing that generally? Started on the Amstrad CPC. Yeah, uh, and then yeah, Atari ST I think then Amiga eventually, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. did they still do Amiga get um? Ed- Sorry, Dizzy Games anymore? Or? They, they sort of remaster and re-release. They've got fans who do it. So they, oh, really? Yeah, they they had a more. Kickstarter, but it did, mm-hmm. didn't succeed, if I remember. Did to make what? a brand new Dizzy. Yeah. yeah, they didn't get the funding to make a new one, but they sort of, um, they've they even found one, and uh, it'll kill me though. I think there was one called Wonderland Dizzy, another one. They sort of got a couple of half-finished NES games that never have Dizzy ones, which were repurposed and sort of repuzzled, but they did get right. sort of uh, Kickstarters and funded to make this. And actually, Cartridge as well, they gave me, um, I think it was the Wonderland Dizzy, they actually gave me, the, you get like an N- oh, NES cartridge you can play. Nice. Yeah, oh, right. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Is it still the, the Oliver Twins behind them? Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's a fan community doing it, but the Oliver Twins sort of give it their blessing and co-masters let it happen. I think yeah, it's basically it's just, it's fair enough, isn't it? Yeah. Nice. The Good end. Dizzy. Yep. And that is all we will ever Bye. say on anything. <laughs> <laughs> we killed it with Dizzy. Put a sting in. Yeah. Put a sting in. Can you put a sting in? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'd Whack a sting right. in. Yeah. That'd yeah. be new stuff, wouldn't it? We've got our sting man. Mm. It's a sting ray. Stingy McGee. Yeah. Get us a sting, stingy. I always remember yeah. Dizzy. Yeah, yeah Dizzy up. classic and character. Cannon fodder. Yeah. I, was, I used to just live off the My Amiga, but yeah, Dizzy was... Did you ever buy a game for the Amiga? Oh, did anyone? <laughs> uh, not really. Yeah, you could easily say clone them, couldn't you? That was yeah. the thing. So, yeah. X-Copy, mate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, X-Copy remember, Amiga.
Yeah. <laughs> Probably, yes. <laughs> there must have been, actually. Must have been. I never remember seeing it. It was always yeah. Fast Copy 3. Do you ever stream Dizzy Games? Have you ever done that? I have done, yeah. I completed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, Prince of the Oak Folk, I missed oh, it. Oh, oh God. I hate that. Probably the most interesting one. name. My Yoke Twitter Yoke. notifications ruined when this comes oh, out. Oh, no, God. So we may right. as well just kill ourselves now. Yep. It's, it's, the same the Prince of the Oak Folk, mate. it's only a little one. Uh, yeah. yeah. Smashed it, mate. Two hours. Done. Fancy World Dizzy is definitely the best, though. It is the best one. Oh, yeah. dinosaur in the Yeah. I was looking at screenshots of Dizzy now. Yeah. That's I remember ranking. buying Treasure Island Dizzy for like two quid on my Spectrum and just getting hours of fun because it's too fucking difficult. But, do you know uh, the reason why it's so difficult? Because the Oliver Twins hate me personally. That, well, they do, but that's they not do. why the game. <laughs> um, Treasure Island Dizzy. So, the, so it's only got you only get one life to play the whole game. And the yep. re, but the reason they do is because when you go underwater in Treasure Island Dizzy, because you, you have to have, you have to find a snorkel oh, the, underwater. Don't accidentally fucking drop if you it. drop the snorkel. Yeah. Then you die, but then you get put back on land. You can't go back and get the snorkel. Oh, I remember and, that. Yeah. yeah. But they want they, the game was close to it was like crunch time. They need to get it out so they could sell it and make some money. So rather than fix the logic problem and give you three lives, they just went, I just give them one life and bin it. <laughs> <laughs> I interviewed a uh, play expert and they, t- they tell this story and it's like, that is genuinely I why. I went to the play expert. They didn't tell me that. Damn it. I'm going to confront them with it. I'm going to confront That's crazy. That's fucking amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Really, it's so fucking difficult, that game. One, if you're jumping somewhere and you accidentally touch like a I don't know, a torch that's on the wall. That's it. Yeah, I remember D- that. Disney yeah. has imprecise controls wise. Yes, yeah, absolutely. It's not fair. Because he's one of those characters that's fun to control, but you lack precision as a result. Good music as well. Yeah, oh, got fantastic. You can't remember. I'm going to have to Google this later. Slowing down again faster depending on how many things are on screen. We're actually sharing a house tonight with Airbnb. So if you hear me like playing Dizzy sounds, like it's watching the video on my phone. Just, yeah. Separate rooms. Uh, um, we've got a four bed Airbnb. Yeah. We've never stayed in an Airbnb before. How many people are staying there? Uh, uh, three. Hello. Yeah. yeah okay. so, for just uh, an yeah. egg. Was it, Dizzy, just find somebody to look of on the way home and invite sure. them back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got to hear that you were previously an understudy to Rick Mayo. I replaced <gasps> Rick Mayo in a, ah, right. in a play. Uh, Balmo- uh, it's called Balmoral. It was 2009. It was Peter Hall Company. So it was like proper. Uh, and it was it started off at the Bath Theatre Royal and then was touring around and then was going to go to London um, but yeah so I was I, I incredibly got the part to study Rick but a week before the show went up um, Rick, Rick obviously had the um, uh, Ooh, the, uh, the ATV quad bike crash thing was yeah, it? yeah 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 ah, so, right. so he was always so he was always on medication after it because he nearly died uh, mm-hmm. and so occasionally over time his medication would get less effective and he'd have to change or try different things sort of a different cocktail of stuff and um, during rehearsals he'd, he'd had to change it and he, uh, he I, I was actually at the wardrobe fitting when it happened but he was he was in rehearsals and he just, he just went and he, he didn't know where he was what was going really? on really? Like, he couldn't remember lines like line, learning lines was just impossible um, but yeah so um so he, so, so he had like a turn or whatever, um, and had to, had to go. But then over the next couple of days, it became apparent that he couldn't come back. So it was going to right. get better. So uh, instead of uh, the uh, Rick Mayle led uh, Michael Frayne play revival, they right. got me instead. Oh, great! For yeah, the entire thing. Well, we'll, right, well, not for yeah bad reasons for it. But I got I mean, nice reviews. Yeah. The show didn't last as long as it might have done if uh, Rick Mayle had been in because it was very much about him. But no, it was it was amazing because I got um he couldn't learn lines and obviously I was understanding him. So we did get like um I had a foot uh, got to work with him a lot, which is amazing. Yeah, I was going to ask co- about comedy what he was like. Yeah, oh, incredible. Yeah. I mean, He's filthy, but I'm right, actually, yeah, yeah. But somehow it was like, I don't, I don't want to, you know, no, no, me to it. But just somehow in a charming way, it was, he, 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 sort of, he sort of tread that line quite nice. But yeah, I got to spend an entire day, uh, the the Saturday before the Monday when he he left, we had a full day just in the rehearsal room, just the two of us, just sort of working on our character and running lines and uh, right, yeah, just making Rick Mayo laugh. Yeah, just kind of like handing uh, it over, uh, effectively. Oh mate, it was yeah. insane. Just uh, yeah, if you can make that man laugh, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah. I always wonder what he was like. I mean, I didn't get. I really wanted to see he was, bottom, he like, was filthy. Really, all the time, yeah. just like wow. <laughs> I've seen like little clips of him like like in a real sort of yeah. posh dinner, like sort of yeah. like camera catching his eye and sort of doing some. He's amazing, yeah, but, yeah. Very, but very very um very caring, very emp- very empathetic, and very yeah, he was really, right. I think although I think some of the cut some of the other cast I think found him quite hard work, but uh, my, I was already doing comedy by that point. I think he like having a comedian in the room as well. So I think it was sort of a yeah. oh you're okay yeah I mean yeah, it wasn't yeah. one of us because I was new I was nowhere near as good as Rick well, I'm, I will never be as good as Rick Mayo oh, I mean, he, uh, he, 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 he liked having somebody who he could sort of riff with and have a bit of fun with rather than sure. actors yeah yeah which absolutely which are different yeah. yeah, was he be like one of your um, comedy heroes that you've met in a way? No, he was. Oh, he absolutely was. Yeah, yeah. Was, um, yeah I grew up watching Bottom and um, yeah. uh, Filthy Rich, and you know all of all of that stuff. Young ones. Yeah, and it was, yeah, it was in, yeah. When I got the gig, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, very weird doing. Very weird trying to fill his shoes. Deliberately did it very differently. I didn't try to do my Rick Mayer. Right. Yeah, that's really horrible. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah it was amazing. But then off the back amazing. of that, I actually got to. Um, uh, Michael Frayne, who wrote Bal Morris, so he wrote Noises Off, very big playwright. But he, um, he's sort of the main guy who translates Chekhov. 
uh, into English. And I actually, off the back of doing that play, him and uh, the the director brought me in to do like the world premiere oh, of wow. a translation of a Chekhov piece. So I got I got to do the world premiere of a Chekhov piece created by Michael Frayn to, to like uh, wow. the Hampstead Theatre for like a celebration thing. That was uh, Michael Frayn's an amazing, incredibly wrote um oh what's the what uh, 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 Clockwise jo- jo- oh, John Oh John that he wrote that movie. Uh, so like, oh, wow. no, yeah, yeah, yeah no, another comedy gods. Um, and so he actually asked me to perform this. Wow. And, like you don't get many Chekhov premieres. So no, no. no. So that was, that was probably as um yeah. as a special thing. And then I got no more acting work, so now I do this. Oh. <laughs> well, it says here you got um, <laughs> eSports Streamer of the Year yeah. nomination, is it? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah which is weird because I, I don't this. do that. Uh, <laughs> right. I, 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 think, I think the way that one worked is there was so because so, I just started streaming, so it's like, I think that, I think an awards thing came up and it's like oh it says streamer in it and like uh, so I sort of put it out there oh great this may be a thing and somebody nominated me for it and I can only assume that the uh, screening process was so slack that they went yay yeah, seems to be on Twitch we'll give him it but I you know I play Stardew Valley in Minecraft I don't do League right. matches but yeah no I'm 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 a nominated esports person okay that's nice. quite a big thing now isn't it especially though, given it? I've never done it it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how good yeah, I am you might win e-sports. it this year you never and know though, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah, say yeah. hope. So well done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, w- would you ever do esports then? If you think yeah, I do, not work with ESL. Um, okay. So, I'm working more with those guys. Working with James, who runs a, the UK thing, and um, I, I, I like those games. I'd never be able to do it, but I, I presented a couple of sort of silly things. We did something um, Pringles Battle Couch. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> it was ridiculous. We, so we got uh, it's in the print works. Sorry, Keith did this last month, and they um, they it, like insane scale. So they they got this hundred meter long room, built a seventy meter long sofa in it, and flew a hundred gamers who I guess they'd won like a Pringles competition wow. but from like Russia, Germany, Italy, Spain flew more to sit on this so a hundred person sofa all playing a Rainbow Six Siege against each other and then they sort of knocked them out and ended up with one person winning on like Tekken I think was the last game But <laughs> so so I tend to get brought in for the stupid things that involve esports things rather than uh, So you were comparing that then? Or? Hosting, yeah, oh, yeah. So yeah okay. I did a charity thing for the beginning you've got a couple of things coming up maybe I shouldn't say what those things are. It's, it's going great. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Those are things I can't tell you about, but no, it's, no. it's all good. I just love the fact that you're nominated for an award that of certain. Mystery okay. Sports, mate. Mystery yeah, Sports. that's right. Yeah, that's me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you regular podcast, Let's Do a Gaming? Yeah, that's. Yeah, that, and you've I, been on that, Stuart? Yeah, I have. Yeah. Yeah. We did a gaming. We did a great. gaming. We did what do game a gaming. did you do? No, we just no, had a chat, didn't we? Yeah. It's, like, ah. it's like this, but with one less person. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. That's not good. We'll talk, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk afterwards. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah so I, I just, I, what I've tried to, it, it, the weird thing, it, again, it was with the online thing and sort of talked about the affluence of the people that seem to enjoy what I do. And um, I set up a Patreon uh, thing for my YouTube stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, the idea was, oh, if I hit this milestone, then I'll start making a podcast once a month and do a thing. I didn't think they'd actually give me as much money as they did. I didn't okay. think I'd have to do it, but then they did immediately. So then there were, I had to make a podcast, but with no remit. So what I chose to do was just talk to people who are tangentially a, uh, associated with the industry and sort of maybe stories that you don't get to hear as often so it's people like um, well, y- yourself um, Adam Savage who worked for Jinx now does a lot of esports hosting mm. um, Julia Hardy who does the radio one gaming show but sort of Mr P- Biffa who was on Ad Biffa on, yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah. so sort of people who uh, in the same way that I do uh, in, in a nice way are, cli- uh, are clinging on to games well we're not directly contributing anything in terms of making games but we're passionate yeah. about the thing and uh, em- embracing that culture and have somehow managed to forge a path uh, right. benefiting from the hard work of people who make things <laughs> you make movies you're better I don't I just play stuff but, uh, <laughs> Yeah. So what do you enjoy most? Your Twitch streaming, your podcasting? What gives you the most sort of creative uh, joy out of it? Because there's no edit in, a, in the street. It's literally raw like that, isn't it? Yeah, Maybe well, I'll tell you the thing. So, so I, I will answer that, but I'll contextualise it first so it's going to get a bit confusing. So I'm, I'm okay. very, very lucky in that somehow I've got to a point now in my career where every sort of way you can make an entertaining thing that uses games... I've, I'm getting to do it. So I've got, I've, I've just written a book which comes out next month. Uh, What's that called, sorry? Oh, it's called Hey Listen. Uh, <laughs> available from everywhere. Uh, but it's about it's a, sort of a funny history of video games. Um, I've obviously done the TV show a great bit and there's a couple of new things that are coming through that I can't say about. But making telly, um, we've got a thing that we're hopefully doing with Radio 4 soon which involves games. Um, I'm just started doing a stand-up show so I do just stand-up about uh, games. I've got Wi-Fi Wars where you log in on your phone to play games. Bonk. Uh, <laughs> I've got the Twitch streaming. I've got the podcast. I'm on YouTube so I've sort of pretty. So literally all of these different things and what's what's really really exciting about what i'm getting to do is that the extent to which all of those things sort of feed each other in a complementary yeah is uh, is really rewarding so when i 
I, I, I've ne- I haven't done stand up for 12 years and I only did it a few times when I did st- like straight just stand up and say some jokes for a bit um, and I gave myself 19 days to write a new hour and do it up at the Leicester Comedy Festival uh, and that's impossible you don't really do that and the show's not finished yet but um, what I what I hadn't counted on was doing Wi-Fi Wars as a live tour show I stand on stage for two hours and commentate on people playing games and respond to the room I'd been writing a book where my job for six months was to make sure a paragraph is funny and concise and well crafted and with Twitch I'm talking for 10 hours a week in response to people saying things. Mm -hmm. And the extent to which that had made me match fit in terms of crafting a joke or thinking funny and being able to spontaneously react to what's going on in a room made that show far easier to do than if I'd have just independently Mm -hmm. done that as the thing I'm doing. And so what's really exciting at the moment is, is... not a bad, it's not, not so bad answer, but I like doing all the things because every time I go and do the other one, I discover without having to prep, I've got mm. I've developed a skill that's more useful. Yeah. So it's sort of I'm really enjoying them. I'm, I need a, I need to sleep. I'm so tired. <laughs> but uh, I, it, it's really exciting that even even something like the book, which is horrible, don't ever write a book. It's, <laughs> it's so hard. But mm. there was a there was a discipline of of crafting language that then inform, yeah. informs the other stuff. And they uh, all feed into each other, like you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's that, that's what I can't believe in my life, really, is that with all of those little bits, they all... Every, every, everything, I get paid and I get to do the thing. Yeah. But, but collectively, they just... they just Every day's exciting. Like, today I'm here doing this, tomorrow I think I'm streaming, and then I've, I've got a gig on Friday at the Royal Institution, and then last... Yeah, I was doing that live Dungeons and Dragons thing. Like, every day I'm just... Yeah. I'm so lucky. So you're sort of living your dream in a way. No, I am. I mean, I really am. Yeah. I, I, like, I get really tired, and I, 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 I can be quite grumpy or rude, but I... I, like, I always try to remember myself, I, it's ridiculous that this is what I get to do, just be an idiot. And yeah, that's games. true. And I sometimes talk about that as well, because in our own ways, you know, to be able to do what you do, we would both <laughs> do it if we weren't getting paid, but to, be able to do it as a career is, is, is incredible. I'd be doing it all anyway. The fact, yeah, the fact yeah. that I don't have to do fitness club franchising anymore. Yeah, that's, it. that's the whole thing is that absolutely. it becomes all of the thing and not just what you do mm. after work when you've got some time. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And that, you know, that, you know, it takes a long time to get. I don't know how, do you just, I don't, I'm, I know you don't have a day job. No. No, no, yeah, yeah, but it's sort of like, say, but when you make that leap, it's so exciting. Yeah, it's so exciting. you have to still Absolutely. pitch yourself sometimes, and I think it's sort of I don't know that balance of getting the balance right of resting, like you say, and not having nope. burnout. Which I, <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, I've not managed yeah. it yet either. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, do, do you prefer streaming though? I mean, is there like a, is there, out of all those strands, is there one niche that stands out that you go like I prefer something that's compact? You know, you don't stream, and I think they're edited sometimes. Yeah, I think and... there is no there is no substitute for hearing a room of people laugh at a thing that you okay. said. So, How do you get that on a live stream though, when you're doing like video games? No, I don't. don't. Yeah, uh, that's right. <laughs> that's, that was my favorite with you when well, we were doing stuff. I was like, are they yeah. laughing? Ha, ha, they can write lol if they want. But, yeah, it's not the same. Yeah. but yeah. being in, like, whether it's filming the TV show because there's a studio audience or doing the live, hearing people viscerally react to a, an idea you had. Because mm. like when I was doing acting, I wanted comedy acting. I still wanted the laugh. So I've always been mm. chasing the laugh. So that for me is lovely. But um, in, ter- in terms of... I, th- I think the streaming probably is the thing I enjoy the most at the moment because okay. those moments are fleeting. Doing a show lasts an hour or two, whereas the streaming thing is it's hours every week and um, it's it, it, it's it's at home. Mm. So I, I can wake up thirty minutes before I've got to do it. Yeah. Says turn it on and, and, and you're doing it and you're immediately engaging with people and playing. Yeah. I'm just playing games and having chats with people that, broadly speaking, I like. Some of them are dreadful, but the majority <laughs> right. of them are, are, are really good company. Okay. Uh, and so it's actually nice to catch up and find out what's going on with their lives. And we, we had to, I, I won't talk about the details. But we had somebody who had quite a tough time a couple of nights ago. Go. Um, she, uh, they, they'd been out in town and a, th- a thing had occurred, but they were able. To, they actually came to the chat during the stream, and people were able to sort of talk them down and mm. reach out privately through Discord. We've got like a Discord server where they can all have a chat and um, then come and hang out at another show I was doing another day and meet up and sort of. So mm. the ability to actually, genuinely, the ability the, the, more than anything else, you directly feel the benefit you're having on people's lives yeah. through streaming because you, you you get a tangible result from it and ultimately making people happy is nice so I think that I think that's why that appeals to me the most yeah. but a laugh's really yummy sure yeah <laughs> I've, I've done some cook-alongs like live stream right, on yeah, my yeah. channel and like there is a buzz about being live where yeah. you like if you muck up you muck up and there is yeah, that yeah, but yeah. I think like there is that thing of I don't know. That's the thing, they're both kind of, live. They are both live. That's yeah. the thing, it's just that, yeah. Yeah, I think when you've got an audience there, they say it's something to a bit feed off of, but when you've just got comments, sometimes it's kind of like, so, yeah. okay, so shall I bring it to a close now? Or, oh, let's keep going for another hour. Let's yeah. just, just keep passing it on. I think, so, that's why, I think that's why I found the yeah. book so hard as well, is that everything else I do usually has got an audience at the point that it's created, and that's, um, mm-hmm. yeah, that makes it much more yeah, yeah. pleasurable. How about you, Stu? What do you prefer? Because you mm. you've really got into streaming the last sort of... Yeah, I do enjoy the stream, but I don't do massive amounts of it. I'm doing one like a week. Once a week. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I still enjoy the YouTube stuff as well. I did enjoy writing the books. Yeah, did you? I enjoy writing the books, yeah. But mine was a different... Mine, yours is a very sort of coherent 
<clears throat> from A to B, this is the story of gaming, whereas mine's much more episodic, as in here's mm. one game, here's another game. Yeah. So if I change anything, it doesn't involve changing everything else as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. which makes things a lot easier. Sketches yeah. rather than a movie sort of thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, precisely. Um, and I really like the research for it, just digging through these terrible old games. You're right, yeah, yeah, yeah That kind sure. of stuff and, you know, going through the magazines and finding out a little bit of extra info on yeah. it. Well, the thing is, because you are genuinely passionate about it, it's nice to find mm. out. Like, I, I mean, the book nearly killed me because it was so, it's, it's really hard writing a book. Yeah, and it's really, you know, it's proper bloody comprehensive. It's really long. You I've know, read every text. book there is about games and try to weave a comprehensive narrative through the chaos of games for 25 years and it was hard yeah but, is that what your book's about you oh, it's literally, it? it's, yeah. my, my book literally goes from the uh, well it starts at Bagatelle uh, okay so it begins with Bagatelle and it ends on uh, the Ocarina of Time sort of the, the best game of all time wow but the reason so games wise it's Pong to Ocarina which is pretty much the games that I played I had a home Pong console that was my parents and Ocarina was the last game I played before I went to uni and then mm -hmm. did that so it's, it is satisfyingly my, my period of games as well but what I attempted to do was in a way that and I've read them all so I know none of the other books uh, really give due weight to all, all areas of gaming and, and try to find the ways that they integrate so whether it's arcade or console or computer and whether that's UK or Japan or mm -hmm. Europe or, or wherever else is a lot of them tend to plough a particular line and what I've tried to do is uh give due weight to sort of the early stuff that was going on with computers that then informed the technology that became consoles right. and the way developers sort of came through the demo scene mm -hmm. uh, with, with early computers and then they ended up working for uh, companies that then took their games to consoles. So sort of trying to... So that it was it was the... And, and the history of computer games makes no sense because just people at universities for 20 years just making random stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know. just so sat with loads of Chris around him. Like, yeah, like sure. David Doak, right? So what you yeah. were saying? The guy who did Goldeneye. Yeah. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. We had him on and yeah, he said he'd just sort of like forage away for like yeah. 60 hours and the cleaner just comes in and they grab a coffee right. off the lady on the car and yeah, yeah. it's just like full on. Like, but that, was, that was the thing. Yeah. It's trying to, trying to find commonality through it and a sense of structure that didn't make that overwhelming or feel too... Uh, messy so try, trying to do that cleanly whilst also then trying to make it funny right. <laughs> as well but I I, I, I I mean I'll find out when it comes out because people tell me on Amazon but I think it's it's a, it's a, it's fun and it's a light reader uh, if, if you're into games I think you'll enjoy it but it I've, I, I hope it's comprehensive I feel like if you want to know the history of games I think at the end of it as well as have clean oh, absolutely you're, is. Well, you're, well, you've had yeah. a look at it and thank you yeah. but um, yeah it's proper mm. like if, if you were doing a, a, a course and you'd got to learn about the history because if you were doing like a game design thing or something I think if you've got to read one book but you can't you don't want to read a really boring book no. I think, mm. I, think I, I can give you it without feeling yeah, like, like a resource too much it's like yeah, yeah. yeah I hope so I'd really, I'd really like that so, how long like, did it take you to write it six months really yeah, yeah. yeah. that's pretty short for a book of it's pretty short sort of and also yeah. like um uh, me, uh, me, me and my family we had a very tough year last year so there was lots of things going on personally that made it very difficult so it was sort of doing it with no sleep and stressed and, and lots of mm. other things so and still yeah. maintaining your other work as well and still right? doing everything else yeah. Yeah. you still got to do the streams and you've got you know, yeah. like pitching stuff uh, the stuff that is now paying off whether it's online or radio or telly and sort of so yeah and live shows as well so yeah it was, yeah, it was um, a juggling act so have you got a, a sequel to the book lined up potentially based well, this on is, well, I was it, talking to you about this or? before we came out is, yeah. is the problem like, I hope it does really really well the problem is if it does really well they'll want me to make another one and I don't want to do one right <laughs> yeah that's it because <laughs> it's yeah. really Hard, but uh, they'll offer me more money and I need I get that. Ghost writers, so, what most of the YouTube people do. Yes. <laughs> we know who you are. Yeah. So yeah, Metsky, <laughs> no, Metsky wrote his own has book. He, has he even got it's, a book? Yeah, it's oh, a fascinating history out. on uh, German architecture and the use of concrete uh, in it. Yeah, it's a really right. good book, yeah. Yeah. He's not written a book. <laughs> I was about to say uh, that. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but no, I, I, would I, would love, I would love to write another one. Ideally, what, what I hope will happen is that actually... Uh, maybe the TV and radio thing will come off and we're hopefully doing a tour in the autumn uh, like a live thing so I, I'm hoping that the other things will come off quick enough that I'm busy and then I can go I'd love to write the book and I can't do it for another year and then I, <laughs> then I think I could get the other stuff done and then once that's delivered yeah. then maybe with free time before those things release I could, which is a ridiculous position to be in my career again to go oh I hope that thing lies up there so I get to do that And then, but it's yeah. sort of I've already got stuff in my diary for like 2021 it's, sort of, it's, wow. it's, it's getting stupid yeah. esports uh, uh, as well isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 and I miss yeah. esports yeah, that's yeah. right yeah. Yeah. got to get my 40 hours a day <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, would you? Would it be a continuation of the current book going on from Ocarina yeah, of Time? Yeah, yeah. The obvious thing to do would be sort of pick, yeah, pick up where that leaves off and go up to. I, I, what I really wanted them to do at E3 this year was just announce the next li line of consoles because that'd be neat. Oh, go, oh good. I'll do, do it to the sort of PS4, Xbox One. Great. But now I don't. Yeah, I don't know quite where that would timeline would to be. Do it from Ocarina of Time to Majora's Mask and just be ridiculously be over better. detailed. Yeah, that would be great. Just a pamphlet. Really... I'll do a pamphlet. Next. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just on really thick paper. Yes. 
I wish I thought of that. Um, yeah. We've but got yeah. three questions that we always ask people. Okay. Um, who is the most famous person you've ever met? Famous, because uh, you, you sent me these and it was very good. Kevin Spacey is the most fam famous really? person. Really? That's met. pretty famous. Wow. It's up to you whether you want to now ask me more questions about that. Um, mm. Yeah, well. So, when, yeah. <laughs> how did you find the famous actor and in no way disgraced personality, Kevin Spacey? <laughs> he was absolutely fine. Uh, which in a way is an insult to me, unfortunately. But uh, we... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I did uh, when I, I lived out in Texas. Because uh, I, 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 I did a management degree, so we sort of didn't you lived in Texas. I lived in Austin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. awesome. So I studied there for like four, four or five months. Did you ever go to the Big Texan? Uh, as in Texas, is a place where there's like huge eating challenges and stuff. No. I, 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 when I went past, I literally skimmed through the <laughs> top neither. of Texas. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty big, Texas, right? But it's uh, very, very big. Yeah, yeah. I skimmed I, just the top of it when I yeah, drove no, across. I, and, I did uh, bits of it. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Forget that. Sorry. <laughs> they, um, they, when I was there, because so, I was, I was really sort of doing like amateur dramatics at university. And things and and they were um a notice went up at the at the uh, university for uh, extras for I think it was oh, I can't remember what it was called the life of David Gale so okay. called Kevin Spacey's blockbuster hit the life of David Gale uh, I think it was Laura Linney we said on it but they just wanted a bunch of people to be at a protest so it was just like turn up and you yeah you had, you had to audition just to go and sit in a field for the day but to that but he was he was very, he was it sounds like obviously he's bad and he's done loads of bad things. On that day, he made an effort to just sort of talk to people while they were on set. And sort of so you just sort of said hello and like, yeah. how are you doing? So yeah, yeah. chatting, very friendly. He's not nice, right? Yeah, but oh, that I thought it was all alleged. It was, it was oh, is it? All, oh, he might um, be nice. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> He's allegedly nice. He can sue me. I've got no money. It's <laughs> yeah. fine. Come at me. Um, can I call Kevin Spacey out on this? <laughs> I think you already have. Yeah. Yes, because he's here tonight. Oh, <laughs> oh no, yeah. Because he's not allowed out of the country. Fine, we'll go with allegedly yeah. until someone yeah. tells me different. Yeah. But no, I wasn't yeah. sure where that. Yeah, that. but the most famous famous person I've met is Kevin Spacey. Right. And I I mean, from a British perspective, like you say, Rick Mayo, I mean, that's insane. Yeah. I would love to have met Rick Mayo. Like, yeah, sure. Well, like see, with Guy, but I've been like, I mean, like, you know, I met Jonathan Ross, and obviously Darren. There's lots of famous people mm. that I've met through what I do. But um, yeah, I suppose Kevin Spacey's in movies, and movies are the best one, aren't they? Yeah, that's I guess they're the best yeah. one, always, yeah. with fame. Is that, yeah, I think, I think so. so. It's like him, then the Queen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's right, yeah. <laughs> Um, have you ever been in a local newspaper? I've been, yeah, well, yes. yes the like. esports champion no, in the local right, newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, like Amateur Dramatics, I've been lots. The, 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 probably the, the favourite one to go for for the purposes of this is uh, I was uh, in the Milton Keynes Citizen uh, uh, for when working at that fitness club franchise in the early days. I was uh, Office Angel's temporary employee of the month. Ah, nice. Yeah, yeah which, I, which I actually got two months after I was in Brenda's show, which won the Perrier. So that was sort of a, oh, a, 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 a lovely nice signal of how well my life wasn't yeah. going. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, so that's showbiz in a nutshell, oh, really, isn't oh, it? It's like, yeah, yeah. No, I've, won, I've won the Perrier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm and, the temp. Oh. <laughs> that's, is that paper in, that's that's in the paper as well? Yeah, I've got the photo in there. Yeah, yeah, that's, that. that's, yeah. the, that's what we want. Um, and the most embarrassing situation you've ever, ever been in? Are there many or a couple? Or? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm a comedian. My life is shamed. <laughs> my, my skin is very thick. Um, when, when I, the, the first one, I, the first one I sort of remember really embarrassing is when I was a kid in um, school play, which I imagine school play comes up a lot. But uh, uh, we were soldiers and we had to do like a little march, and it was first play. I've been in very excited, sort of marching forwards, marching backwards, and I was so excited, keeping my head up high because I was told that was the thing. You sort of, you know, soldiers are very proper. So yeah. marching, I was so busy marching, and concentrating on looking up, that I walked off the front of the stage and bent oh! it, and every parent in the room laughed. Oh no! Yeah. Oh. So I probably hurt myself, and then I sort of crawl back on stage and oh, yeah. my little marching, and that. It's yeah. like you've been framed somewhere, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, that, 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 that was embarrassing. Yeah. yeah. My dad did ballet years ago and did he fell off the stage at Bristol Hippodrome. There we go. Nice. Uh, oh, yeah. You always did ballet for thing. Uh, he did it for like two years or something. Really? But he, like professionally? He was, uh, like, was like, No, just sort of like a amateur sort of class thing. But they managed wow. to do have a segment. There's like all the amateur groups were on a... Uh, stage thing like a big festival thing that's so cool but it was, uh, the Hippodrome was full it's quite a big yes. uh, place there and uh, he just fell off the stage into the orchestra yeah. Ooh, brilliant been there. Yeah, yeah yeah it's, uh, oh, it hurts yeah. yeah so hopefully he's got his 250 quid off uh, you've been framed as well so, yeah. or someone has yeah that's <laughs> right yeah. <laughs> it was dated like 10 years yeah. before though aren't they you're watching it in, well whenever it is 2000, it was dated in like 1992 or something that, so you never know yeah so here's the question I will ask you if I do a third book what is the most disappointing video game you've ever bought not necessarily a bad one, the one that oh. disappointed you personally. Do I have to have paid for it? Yes. Oh, okay. You have to have... Uh, well, I'm going to say Unravel anyway, because I hated it. But I, but I was never played Unravel. Oh, it, wasn't, it wasn't Unravel's fault. 
Mm. But I played, just not I, your sort of thing. Well, I've got a two month old kid and I had to write a review for it for Jinx. So I had to play the entire thing oh. in the night on no sleep with a. Yeah. Oh. And That's, it's, yeah. it's got puzzles. Uh, <laughs> hey, and just what you needed at that time. Wall based yeah. puzzles were not what I wanted. I, I was actually streaming it and I was playing the first bit. So the video does exist of me just slowly losing my mind with this one bit where there's like a water thing in a bucket. And I'm, uh. So that one, but I didn't pay for that. So most disappointing game I ever bought. Something you perhaps got when you were at school when you couldn't get games very often and you get it home and you're like oh, what's it called? oh no and now I've got to play it for three months because I don't have anything else I think it's called Elf it's on the Atari ST yes so it's like a, it's really weird and it's a yes. bit there's some weird sort of sexy things in that that yep. don't need to be there that is uh, a strange game it's the most uninspiring platform puzzle piece of nothing it really loads is loads of colours yeah it's a very pretty it. game but, but uh, yeah and the elf is weirdly like cool with like shades is it more like a little things, goblin or a yeah. hobgoblin sort of thing is it? it doesn't really look like an elf I seem to... or maybe there's go goblins in it it's been a while I've not gone back yeah. to it let's get elf up I'm going to have a little look at this yeah. could you, you have have elf, elf for me please yeah. certainly thank you elf on the Atari. I've got my phone on airplane mode in the corner that's because oh. you're a good boy yep I have to read uh, shartacles off mine and constantly wake it up you could archive them I could do um, you know, it's your show. I don't want to go on. Let's get a good screenshot of it. Will, right. will this cut down well? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> is, that, is that it? Yeah, that's yeah, it. That's the oh, one. Okay. Yeah, awful well, game. Uh, Horrible yeah. music as well. Really creepy music, I seem to remember as well. Yeah. yeah. Horrible. He, he always looks like he's ready for Basically, a fight. He looks like Lord of the Rings. He does look a bit hobbity, doesn't he? Yeah. I, I can call it. He's squat. He's squat. Yeah. He's squat. <laughs> I'd have got to confuse with a different game, which is similar. That's a completely pointless thing to point out. What about yours? Oh, my... Oh, and other noises to mask the fact that I'm trying to think. No, I can tell. Um, <laughs> I've, I've not asked you guys anything. Oh, Incredibly no, no. Rude. That's fine. That's what we're here for. Yeah, we're not to be asked. Yeah, we're, Literally. Just, we're here a week. Yeah. <laughs> we're just, while you're thinking, what's your worst one? My worst? No. Oh, God, I don't know. I mean, I, you put I, me I'm, on the spot, weren't you? Yeah, yeah I quite I like Actually, games. I do know mine. Yeah, oh. Renegade 3, Spectrum. Yes, that'd be... Yeah, that's a good Yeah, I'm so show. excited. Loved yeah. Renegade. Why do you hate it? Target Renegade. Why do you hate them? It's fucking terrible. It was really expensive. Um, and it was such a disappointment because the first two games I loved and the third one is appalling. Absolutely dreadful. So sorry. Mm. I mean, I've talked about it before. I've, I've dealt with the pain I know. I hated Shadow of the Beast too because I just used to always get stuck. Mm. And I was, I was what annoyed me. So I watched a YouTube Let's Play. I think. But that's an Amiga game, so you probably pirated it. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, you didn't did pay for that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no. Shadow of the Beast too. Um, yeah. I mean, everybody played it. One person bought it, and that was the guy who sold it to the Kraken crew. My mum bought me Parappa the Rapper, so I didn't technically <gasps> buy that. Kick, and I hated punch. that. Yeah, so it was like a dance. One of the first ever dancing games on the yeah. PlayStation, but no, I ain't it. No, I really liked Sensible Soccer and Cannon Fodder. That was what I loved. And You're Dizzy. The sensible and, Software, man. Yeah, I was. And Championship Manager, years playing that. Did you that. ever have Sensible Train Spotting? I've not met anyone who's actually played it yet. Yeah, that was ah. on a cover disc. Mm, yeah, that was. What was that? Uh, so it was like the same. Trains go past, and you tick them off. Yeah. And that's it. There's, there's, there's like press a button. Six big buttons with train numbers, and you sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That was that one. Okay, and that would be. Again. And yeah, that was ripped the... off by a company, wasn't it? A company actually ripped off the entire game design, but changed the graphics and you know rewrote it, did their own version, and yeah. sold it as a proper train simulation. Really? Yeah, well, train spotting simulation. Yeah, I believe there was a legal case as a result. Wow! But I'm pretty safe that that's probably been dealt with by now. Because it's not like, been like 25 stuff, years ago. I'm in trouble. You're fine on that now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God for that. Do you have an actual headlines favorite, next day? Do you have a favorite game other than Dizzy? Then is there like an actual pinnacle one or? Well, it's weird. Minecraft, like Minecraft, I got I, I really, really got obsessed with. Oh, really? And I've, yeah. I've spent more hours on Minecraft than anything else, definitely, and uh, and playing on servers with people as well. I, I, for the last six months, I've just gone off it, and I can't, I can't, I haven't got back into it. But until six months ago, I'd have had to say Minecraft was my favourite game ever. Right. Um, but I can't, I can't get into it at the moment. I think Stardew Valley's a big one for me. I think. Um, Anything Mario, like any mm. main sort of mainline sort of from Super Mario World onwards, any any of the main series, even Sunshine, sort of obsessed yeah. with all of those. I was always Nintendo. So on your Minecraft, you could get people that you're streaming with to join in and build with That's you. That's what you do. Yes, that's big darling. I was doing it, and, uh, wow. and we, uh, the server sort of um, the sort of regulars that were on my Discord server, they could all go on there and sort of place. They were building. They built some amazing stuff. Oh, while you were like well, having a sleep. Well, 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 them, yeah. them in the uh, server as like a surprise. Like, they built like this whole world for me in the server as a surprise for my anniversary on the future. Beautiful thing. How do they hide that from you then? Uh, they, it was sort of a separate world within it, so you sort of port, you sort of type ah, right. sort of thing, and I, and I wasn't on there. That and then much. they bring it in at the end. They, well, they, they, they on the live stream they said, "Oh, go into the thing," and then so I got to discover it and walk through. Oh it. wow, it was beautiful. But one of them had built a graveyard that had got every single death I'd ever done on the stream. <laughs> got, got a team for every time Crash Bandicoot had binned it off a bridge. Oh wow, yeah. the level of effort was insane. Yeah, so, that yeah. just shows the power of the community. I suppose. Yeah, no, well, it is, like yeah. I'm spoiled wrong. Ah, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I think that's pretty much the pod, isn't it? Are there any other questions? I'm trying to. Well, if somebody came to you and said, Mr. McNeil, they're very polite. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we really like all your stuff and we're going to fund your next project for a shitload of money. 
And it's whatever you want. Oh, that's a what good would question. that be? Yeah, uh, it, it would be uh, Wi-Fi Wars on an industrial scale. So, well, we, so for anybody watching this or listening to this who doesn't know what Wi-Fi Wars is, there's a guy called Rob Sedgbeer who's invented a thing that we started off using at Go 8-Bit as a live show, where we've got a Wi-Fi network that we put in the room, and you get your smartphone out, you go, you connect to the network, and then go to an address, and we then beam you buttons or games or quizzes, and the entire audience plays as teams and against each other on video games live, and that's everything from Pong to a, a VR game you can use with a Google Cardboard headset. Wow. 3D first-person shooters as death matches, like the whole thing. And at the moment, we're... It's one of the things I can't say. We're scaling it up at the moment to be able to do it on an arena scale. Um, mm. And we're and uh, so hopefully we'll be doing that soon. Uh, but genu genuinely, even when it's been like 200, 300, 400 people or, or, or however many, there's nothing like that many people being present in a space, enjoying yeah. games and feeling themselves and, and having the ability to win the thing. Um, you know, he's, he's, a, he's literally a genius. But um, do it, doing that, giving him the infrastructure and the hardware and the support he needs, because it's just one man still doing it. Yeah, in, yeah. Even to build it for arenas, it's mm. Rob doing it. And he's doing a great job. And it's, it's basically That's working. Right. We've got to test it in a couple of weeks. But um, I'd love to be able to just say to him, what do you want? And I will buy all of that so you can make the ultimate version of the thing that you're doing because it's already insane. Yeah. So it's but, not um, just, okay, it's, it's the, the best well, I mean, it's already there, insane, yeah. but uh, yeah. it was just like, yeah, what do you want? And just to be able to just give him that without having to do loads of gigs to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make his life easier, speed it up and all yeah. that kind of stuff. But no, Rob, yeah. yeah it's I, a I'll give Rob Sedgbeer all the money you just gave me. Oh, yeah, oh, I want oh, to see oh, it. Oh, <laughs> it's interesting because we spoke to Rob Sedgbeer and he, and said, he said, yeah, he'd keep it. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. I've had my money's worth out of him. That's fine. I think that would be amazing as an event to go to, like, like, yeah. especially in an arena, like you say, everyone's mm. joining in like that. It's insane. Well, it's like just like basically a, a much more scaled up version of what you, you, you did before. Yeah, anyway. it is, yeah. it is, the, the, the main thing is just about distributing it to multiple hubs and things. and So it's just about the logistics of making that work. Yeah. But, awesome. Yeah. So if people want to find you then, is it best the Twitter and all your links are there? Or, uh, yeah, whack my name in Google. That'll, that'll be me. On my website, stevemcneil.co.uk. I'm Steve McNeil on Twitter. Uh, I'm Steve from Go8Bit on Twitch and YouTube. But yeah, Google me and I'll, yeah, and I'm, yeah. That, I'm that one. All right. I think that's it. Yeah. <laughs> We're all good. Excellent. I feel very educated. I want to start streaming now. I want to go play, di I want to go yeah. play Dizzy right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I really we'll want to do. We'll set you up with an amigo yeah. later. He'll yeah, be fine, yeah, yeah, that's it. All right. Thanks very much, Steve. It's good Thank to meet you. you. Thanks for coming Thanks on. Thanks for coming on, man. Thank Appreciate you. it. Cheers, guys. Action!